is Ted. So what we've done today is if you look at the shaft on the near side, he's got an eight inch gap between him and the shaft, yeah? About that, about an eight inch gap. But obviously, yeah, I suppose it is eight inches and about two to three this side. So it's opposite to what we had. Now, what the owners think is that um, he was in a wider set of shelves before when he was broke down here, down with us. But he would have been in a narrow set as well. But they said that he doesn't turn very well. Um, but he's been out of work, you know, for, I don't know, four years, I think, um, with COVID and everything else. So what we're doing is, as what I said to you the other day, we put that one in that position that one I don't recommend people do this it's just what I do to get all used to turning with the shard the shaft hard on its hip obviously when I turn you know to the to the left his quarters will come over this side and his shoulder will go that side yeah and the consequence of that is there'll be a lot of pressure on there if I was to turn to the right, obviously he's got a long way to go over there before he'd come in contact with the shelves. After we've done this, then we'll put both shelves back where they should be and he'll never have a problem. Um, again, often to be, you've got to bear in mind is that the shaft can be pushing it so if you if you're if we're touching here on the offside on his hip on this side here the shaft is going to be in his neck on that shot that side now that that can happen with this type of shaft it can also happen with a loop end shaft and it never did happen with old fashioned vehicles because the shelves stopped just past his chest so the tips of the shells were just past his chest. So whenever he turned, he couldn't get himself, you know, pushing in his neck at all. And that's a generalisation, there's always, you know, but the shells are shaped for a reason that way. And um, so as he turns it, so I'm going to demonstrate that now, just going to walk down here. Come on, babe, walk, hey, good boy. And see, as a general rule, he's right over this side. Go on, on you go, boy. Also, I brought him up here because the other little problem we've got to solve yet, not really a problem, but the sound of... the sound of um, leaves and that round the wheels is a little bit... Uh, makes him prick his ears up. I'll just show you now when I bring him over here and he's... The wheels make a noise through here. So like here for instance, yeah. You see that like he's a little bit. So we'll, we'll stop that. Come on baby, good boy. Come over there, it's a good boy. So what I'm going to do now is ask him to turn tight, round, to the right, yeah? Turn to the offside. So... Just a couple of more to come past. This is also good, let him stand while some traffic's going by. Right, come round, baby. So you can see that side, he can come over there, all the room in the world before his zip touches, yeah? So I'm just sitting here for a minute. Um, I know we're supposed to be talking about shelves, but this is a lovely position. We've just turned round. Yeah, this is quite a safe little lay-by, if you like, this, this set up. 
just to demonstrate this in and you've got the benefit of the traffic coming by at the same time yeah so come up now baby Look on. and we'll come out for this line here so we know we're all right to turn yeah and then we'll ask him to come round come round and you can see that shaft's in his neck there yeah Now, I don't particularly want to put a shaft into all she's neck, do I? Obviously, no one wants to do that. But if you've got a sliding back band sometimes, or your pad slips, um, anything. I mean, someone said the other day that they had a quick release pad come undone. It wasn't a quick release pad that come undone, but it was where it was stitched come undone um, on an oldish set of harness. So, obviously. That makes a great deal of difference. Come on, baby, walk up. So I'm going to bring him up there this time. Stand there, Dolly. There's a good boy. You see how he is nice with the traffic. Come over there then, babe. Walk up. And I'm going to bring him round here. So this time when he goes on, he's it's tight on that side, can you see? See how tight it is because we can get this side. We're gonna do that again. So if you watch this side here, how tight it is on. Come round. You see he's up there on there, look, pushing it round. Pushing the shaft around this side. So he won't bother with the shaft touching him. So we've got that shaft set much straighter, so it's close to him. So when I turn to the left, he's got much more weight on his hip, much more feeling on his hip than he ever would in, in a standard set of shelves. I mean, these are standard shelves. We can adjust them and make them, you can see this one turns out and this one goes straight down, yeah? Making it very straight going through. But it gets all used to Sometimes you get all she's do, you know, from the start when you break them. Uh, you put them in wide shelves. Come round, Dolly. <coughs> <coughs> you see him turn round? A lovely turn. <coughs> Excuse me. And again, we do it again. Come round, baby. Crossing his legs over at the front. Come round again. You can see that it working away, rested on the shaft the whole way round. <coughs> if you get down and just film it as we go. So sometimes with the with the youngster, you put you might put a set. We have lots of different equipment, obviously, but you might put a wide set of shelves on because he's a bit. Uh, touchy about having the shelves touch him on the hip you know and you work on it slowly and number one you can put in and they don't really bother about that i think what it is is when they make their first step to turn round some realize that they're between two shelves yeah they they're, they're, that's where they're placed they realize that other ponies horses whatever it might be, don't realise. So that when they bend, they bend their spine to go round. What we're asking them to do, like this, is to keep your spine straight and cross over with your front feet. So, yeah, that's lovely to see a little pony standing there, the big coach come past. And they're the same as buses today, you know, single decker bus or even double decker buses. The engines are in the back, so it's quite um, <laughs> you know, it's quite funny because the bus comes by, they, they see that, you know, think, where did that come from? Because they can't hear the engine. Well, they can hear the engine, but they, they obviously can hear it. It's at the back of the bus, so they're, you know, and they're thinking that's going to be the front of the bus. So it's quite amusing, yeah, really. But he's a lovely little pony. Um, He's got other, another couple of little quirks, as I say, with noises behind him, but we'll sort that out. That's not a problem. I just want to show you that. I don't recommend you do it. 
I'm just showing you how we sort it out. So even from this position now, if I ask him to come round, watch his feet at the front, look. Come round, baby. Can you see, look, crossing over. So that shaft is really pushing into his hip there, can you see? And this one, well, I'm going to do it one more time for you. And we'll look at this shaft this time. Um, and you'll see it's, although it's pointing away from him, it will still be in his neck applying some pressure. Now that's not what we want, I'm not even, but if something goes wrong, for whatever reason, we want him to be happy or, or he can accept more or less anything happening to him. So we've got this one here really tight on, when he comes over now in a minute, it'll be really tight down there on his, on his hip. And that one there will be right in his neck. So if we watch the neck one this time, come round baby boy. Can you see, look? Good boy, come round my darling baby. Here's a good boy. Yes you are, you little sugar plum. Come round darling. Can you see it in his neck? Yeah. So if a mistake's made, if a, a, a bit of equipment fails, anything you can possibly think of, and that happened, He's not as likely to panic because he's experienced it, isn't he? he he's experienced having that feeling on him. And that's all part of braking and training horses. Braking's a silly word, really, isn't it? Braking them. But, you know, that's one we've used for years, hundreds of years. So, anyway, so there he is, little Ted. Lovely fellow. I'm going to do that one more time. This time, we're going to get. Regis to film it from the ground and you know so you can see the pressure on the on the on the thigh. Come around baby boy. Again, real tight, yeah. Come on, baby. Come on. So I hope that explains, you know, what we're trying to achieve. Good little Ted. Yeah. Turning in the shots will never bother him again. He will never be that tight in the shelves. What I mean is because we've adjusted that one, when he stands square to it, come up baby. So when he stands square like that, artificially holding him in the position he will be when both both shoulders are in the right position. So if you look now we got about four and a half five inches down. Four and a half five inches down that side. But when we're turning the amount of pressure on the offside shaft on this offside hip would be far greater yeah, than it would be on this one because the shaft is set out there due to the way we've got the front end turned. So we've got one turned in and one turned out. So that's how we get them used to having that shaft. It's not something I recommend anybody does. Anything I tell you is just what I've learned over the years that is the best way of solving problems. Um, I've seen people, you know, do it with all sorts of different things, but nothing will replace the actual pair of shelves. And it's a very, very dodgy thing to do. Uh, perhaps I've seen it done with broom handles. as well. To me, that's just no good at all. And if one of them breaks, they can break into a sharp spear and be very dangerous. 
so we're going to go off down into town now because it's uh, carrot and coffee time <laughs> we're at carrot and coffee time <laughs> 